it's a point of no return. You know what that means? The welds are done. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have a fast back. We actually don't have that many hours in here, Trey. How many, how many hours do you think we got now? All right, my friends. We are back at it, and we are going to fit and finish this Mustang by the end of this video. It took a few weeks, but not because of ours. It's just because of our availability. <laughs> If you missed the first video, we've been trying on some new fastback clothes to this coupe. After all the cutting, kind of a convertible. It's a point of no return right now. We did a air quotes, yeah, few different already. fitments. Heck yeah. She's almost a fastback. And finally arrived at something we can now actually can say fit. So this thing has gone through quite a transformation. Again, just as we did with the sheet metal removal, we started at the back and worked our way forward. We started with the fitment of the rear valence. This is an important step because many times the rear valence is an afterthought and it's one of the last pieces that go on. Working backwards here really helped because everything, and I mean everything, was adjustable. In fact, because everything was so adjustable at this point, we found ourselves just aiming to reduce some of the variables. It's like playing that movie from the last scene backwards. Just after that valence was fit up nice and neat, we went to the door gaps and made sure those were still on track. After that, we did a little rear glass test fit and then the rear deck lid. If you've ever messed with the sheet metal on a fastback, then you know the rear deck lid has a lot of geometry and that things it could go wrong. It could Start go wrong, here. but when it's adjusted, it is seriously a money shot. So if you're planning to do a conversion to a fastback, then here are a few things you should expect. Expect to do some relief cuts in the new sheet metal. Expect using a large variety of tools you haven't used as levers before and expect a few hours of adjusting the rear deck lid and hinges. Expect to drill a lot of holes. And mind the gaps. Take your time on the gaps. All right, so once everything was in place, we marked up where we thought the new welds should go, and then we blew it up again. There's an aftermath of parts. And as the parts came off, we put a quarter to 3 16 holes so that we could weld back up. The hole punch really sped up this process. Trey and I were both really shocked at how fast this process took us. One thing we noted is to mark your tech screw holes so you don't confuse it with a hole that needs to be enlarged as a spot weld. Otherwise, you're gonna be searching for where that tech screw should go when you put it back together. There are a lot of things you can do on a classic Mustang that just don't reveal the progress at the end of the day. This one, however, is not one of those mods. You can see a transformation in a matter of 30 minutes. In fact, I remember us looking at each other and saying, wow, this thing took on some major transformation really quick. At this point, we have everything ready to weld up. We're just gonna bust out our welders 
and go to town on the infrastructure, everything. Burning it in. And we have finally a coupe to fastback conversion on our hands. Uh, we are gonna get this thing prepped up, ready for some paint. Um, you know, get to that point, gonna coat it, epoxy primer, treat all the rust, undercarriage, everything. Um, I would love to keep this thing because it's such a solid platform for so much fun. So if anyone in the is watching is wanting it or any interest anybody interested in it uh we have lots of parts we have enough parts to fill this whole thing um we'll make somebody a deal we've got a coupe to fastback under our belt and i couldn't be except more excited how it turned out seriously uh we've welded it all in everything's very structured we just have some more body work to do kind of finish it out so yes this thing is going to be awesome. So, you know, coupe to fastback, there's nothing really rare about this car. There's nothing really that you have to worry about keeping it original. You can just go and you can have fun with it. It's, it's so much fun to do this conversion just for that simple reason. It gives you the freedom to not worry about originality. I like original cars, don't get me wrong. I love the whole, original effect but like right for this car what's right for it is doing what we're doing in my opinion uh we are going to bring more value to it it's going to bring more fun more looks i love the coupes but this one's got it going on yeah like totally missing so we actually don't have that many hours in here, Trey. How many how many hours do you think we got now? Ten maybe? Oh no no, we got a little bit more than that, right? Yeah, maybe twelve. Twenty-four? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'll tally them up and we'll put them up on the screen right now.